City of Zion welcomes you to our Sunday church service. Let's join Intensity for worship moments. Come on everybody, put your hands together. We've got praise in this place. Can I hear you shout?
Oh, we bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We give you praise. Come on, somebody, help us lift this Jesus. Help us lift this King, this King of glory. Woo! Yeah. We hail you, Lord. We crown you, King of kings. Come on, just open up your mouth and pour out your worship this morning. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We lift you high, Savior. Oh, yes, God. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay our crowns and worship you. Father, you alone be lifted above every other God. We lay our crowns and worship Glorious God, we praise your name. We lay our crowns and worship you. You are the glorious God. We praise your name. We lay our crowns and worship you. Oh, be lifted, oh, above all other gods, we lay our crowns, and we worship, come on, oh, be lifted, oh, be lifted, above all other gods, we lay our crowns, yes, and we worship. Glorious, glorious God, we praise your name. Oh, we lay our crowns and we worship. Yes, God, you are the glorious God. We praise your name. Oh, oh, oh. we lay our crowns.
to me. That is who you are, God. Hey. And you are now. I make my vote. Yes, God. Yes, God. You reign alone. As the Lord of all. Come on, everybody. Salute him. The champion The host of all. Yes, God. Yes, God. He's the Good morning, church, and welcome to our first 10 a.m. service of the year. If you're visiting with us for the first time, welcome to the City of Zion. We are blessed to have you with us today. Now, as we would do if we were welcoming you live into our church, we'd like to give you a small e-gift and a welcome letter. But if you'd rather just send us an email with your information, by all means, do so. The details are on the screen right now. Now, why have we moved service to 10 a.m.? Well, from the 7th of February, we're hosting development classes, levels 1, 2 and 3 at 9 a.m. So who attends the development classes? Well, if you've just been introduced to the City of Zion and you'd really just like to understand our teachings better, you want to start the first level with me. However, there are those of you who have been through my classes, that's right, and you need to make your way into Pastor Elgin's class for level two, or from Pastor Elgin to Pastor Charlene's class for level three. That's right, we're not just starting from the front. You know you have a commitment, so we hope that you've signed on, and we're looking forward to hosting you on Zoom. Parents, I can hear your question. If church is at 10, and development classes is at nine. What time is Sunday school? Sunday school is still at 10.30. We know that most of your children have their own devices or you have more than one device in the home. You can still watch your service while the children join us for their doves, their lambs and their eagle classes. We'd like to urge you all to join us for our morning devotionals at 5 a.m. They titled Dawn with Pastor Tim, and it's a wonderful way to start your day. They have grown us, they've invigorated us, they've refreshed us as we begin our mornings. With church being online and with us not being able to congregate with our church families, this has truly been a way for us to connect with the Word of God and to keep our community together. And so we welcome you every weekday morning. There was a time in our lives when we would have considered online church, church unusual. 
but it's not anymore. It's become church usual. And so if you're new to the city of Zion and you've given us your details, the one step that we haven't taken was to introduce our programs to you and for us as pastors to introduce ourselves to you. So what we'll do in late February, early March is that as pastors, we'll come online with all our new members and just introduce ourselves to you and tell you who we are and what we do. We're a family at the City of Zion, and it's going to be a great experience to see you all face to face as you become members of our family. For those of you who have been able to join us for development classes one, two, and three, well done on you. For those of you who meant to join us and haven't done so yet, there is always a chance. So we hope to host those of you who are still hoping to come in next week, Sunday at 9 a.m. And now let's welcome Pastor Tim Grage. Welcome, welcome to another Sunday morning at the City of Zion. For those of you worshiping with us for the very first time, I'm so glad you could be with us. There is an email address on the screen. There is also a, a link. If you are with us on the live chat, please just pop us an email, click the link. The whole idea is we want to show you a bit of hospitality. We have an e-gift and a welcome letter that we would love to send to you. You could be anywhere else, but you chose to be with us. I am always excited when we gather together like this. Why? Because every time we meet like this God has a word for somebody and you and I know every time God sends his word somebody is about to be saved healed delivered transformed and that's going to happen even today for me today is a special Sunday because I've tagged it vision Sunday vision Sunday in the last number of months a number of people have chosen to make the city of Zion their home this is besides the hundreds that are already part of this growing family and so today I want to introduce the city of Zion to a number of you and I want to rehash where we who we are why we are where we are going even also to those of you that have been part of the family because every now and again we need to be reminded of God's mandate for us so that we understand what he has also made available and we are better equipped to fulfill the goal so again today is vision Sunday welcome to vision Sunday we are going to be going through a bit of memory lane as I begin to take you and hopefully we'll show you some pictures as well as to where we started from how things used to look as against probably how I used to look as well <laughs> and how we have come from there to this point in time. We'll be checking a few scriptures as well. And so as it's fast becoming a new pattern for us, if you have your Bibles, no need to stand up today. You can, you can stay seated wherever you are. But if you have your Bible, take your Bible with me, lift it up and repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today, as I hear his word, it will take root in my heart and bear a hundredfold fruit in my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Oh Lord, cause my tongue to be as the pen of a ready writer. So who are we? We are the city of of Zion. You see, when we initially started, we were called Word Integrity Ministries. And the reason for that was primarily because when we initially began, I didn't even have a name for the church uh, because the whole concept then was I was more focused on what God wanted us to accomplish as against even having a name. We started in my living room and big ups to Pastor Kemi, my wife. Oh, by the way, yes, I am married. For those of you that are unaware, be married this year. It will be, let me get it right before a fight breaks out. It will be 18 years in April, 18 years that we've been married. And I celebrate her because when we initially were going to start, we, we had to start in our living room. There was nowhere else to go. And she had no complaints. I had a two-year-old then and we we're bringing people into our space and, and she was totally comfortable with it. I remember it was on a Saturday morning. We had invited people to come through from our network and about 11 people showed up uh, that fateful Saturday morning. And we gave them breakfast. We went into the the word we did a bit of praying as well and I said to them that the next meeting will be in two weeks time and we had a glorious time together 
the following Saturday morning, I got up and it was supposed to be a relaxed day. And the Lord said to me, I want you to get dressed, go sit in your lounge and study my word. I, I didn't know he had something else planned. So I did that, sat in the lounge. The next thing, we're getting information from the main gate saying there are people out there wanting to come to see us. So I go out there to check it out. And some of the people who were there the week before had chosen to come again. I was a bit confused. I, I remember saying to pastors Ivan and Maureen, they're our first set of pastors, a wonderful couple out there in Durban right now. And I said to them, this is supposed to be every two weeks. And I remember Maureen looking at Ivan and saying, oh, but we're here now and they weren't the only ones. So I brought them into the house and that was how we went from once every two weeks to every Saturday morning. It was, it was awesome. By the end of that first month, our living room could no longer contain the people that were coming. People were asking others, telling others, have you heard the word before? You've not heard the word like this before. And people began to come through. And so we went on a hunt to find our first um, external venue to use. And we found a place out there in Randburg called the Mercure Inn. And that's the picture uh, that you can see. This brings back some very interesting memories. I remember we moved there. It was Saturday morning and, and we will, uh, uh, Kemi and I will wake up early in the morning to prepare breakfast. We didn't have to. People weren't asking for it. It wasn't even meant to be a draw card. We were doing that because we just felt that we wanted to give back um, to people as they came through. And that has always been our model of doing ministry in the first place. And so we'll wake up early early hours of the morning and we will prepare the breakfast and then we will cart it through to the to the venue because the meeting started at 8 o'clock so that by 9 30 just before 10 o'clock we we will be able to leave and it, we had a glo do you know we, we started this that particular year and I think it was in April it was in April that year and there was no name I remember a lady called Cindy called me up and said we're inviting people to the meeting and they're asking us what is it called and that's when it actually dawned on me we actually don't have a name and i began to pray um and this was sometime in october of that year i began to pray but nothing really convincing was coming to my heart so i said look my emphasis is the word of god i'm just going to call it word integrity ministries and so we called it that registered it at that and i introduced it that saturday and that is how we began we ran that model of saturday morning meetings for about a year and then to close it um, a year later um, actually that same year to close for that year we moved into sunday morning just to test the waters just to see if we we're ready to to, to transition to a Sunday morning. And that Sunday morning was spectacular. You know, there's some things that stay with you forever. I remember there was a guy that came in that Sunday morning and he was on crutches. This was at the Hilton Hotel, um, not too far from where I am sitting right now in Santa. And, and he came in on crutches. And before the end of that service, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. He got healed. You can imagine the place was in an uproar. It was just clear that we were onto something, that God's hand was with us and God's hand was upon us but it was also a sign to us to let us see um, what was going to happen um, and was going to 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 be part of the model that we will see at the city of Zion and so we did that we closed for the year the following year we began to make plans and we decided we we're going to launch on a Sunday morning it was phenomenal we launched at the Mercure Inn did that for about two months and then we moved to the Hilton Hotel in Santa and I'm not gonna bore you with the details we're actually going to be putting pictures and and just to just to take some of you on memory lane some of you as you see these pictures you will remember where were you <laughs> when 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 all of these things were going on i mean um, um what in what 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 stage in life were you um when you came into zion during this this season and so it was phenomenal we have traveled quite a bit trying to find a stable accommodation a stable home but one thing that we had tried to never compromise was the word. Our emphasis has always been the word of God. We are what you call a teaching ministry. And the reason is two, twofold. And this is why I do a lot of teaching. And this is why when you come into the city of Zion, you must be ready to take notes. And the reason is twofold. Number one is because the grace that is upon my life is to teach you. It's upon my head to, to release God's counsel to you. And the reason is simple. We do not want to raise superstars at the city of Zion where there is only one person that has all the knowledge, has all the oil, all the anointing. No, the idea here 
is God has given um, you a teacher in, in myself at the city of Zion so that you can be taught. Let me read to you Ephesians chapter 4 concerning our, my assignment, right? It says in Ephesians chapter 4 from, from verse 11, it says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting. The word perfecting there doesn't mean the saints become perfect. Ha, ha, we are not a church of perfect people. We are not a church of people who never make mistakes. And so irrespective of your weaknesses and your stumblings, the city of Zion can still be a home for you. It's not as though we condone um, your stumblings, but we understand that we are all in a process of growth and in as much as we will embrace you, we will work with you to grow you. The word perfecting in this scripture in verse um, 12 speaks about maturing of the saints. So he says, for the maturing of the saints, for the work of the ministry. And so God's desire is that every believer that comes into not just the city of Zion, that comes and becomes part of his body, that becomes part of his family is taught enough so that they mature and one of the proof that they are maturing is that they begin the work of the ministry. Every one of us has been given an assignment in God. We have been given individual assignments, we've been given corporate assignments and you can only fulfill that assignment if you are in a place where you are being taught. So it says for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. The word edify there means to build up because even as our own version, if, if I may call it that, our own um, cutout of the body of Christ begins to grow because we are still connected to the rest of the body. The entire body becomes empowered. But I love verse 13. I'm still in Ephesians 4. It says, till, we'll all, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is where my heart really exploded. When the Lord explained to me that teaching will bring people to verse 13, let me, just, let me read verse 13 again. It says, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Saints, when it says of the knowledge of the Son of God here, he is not talking about the fact that you now know the Son of God who is Jesus. It's talking a bit more than that. Yes, you know the Son of God and hopefully you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior. But when he says, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, he's saying the same knowledge that Jesus Jesus has, you and I are meant to have. Did you get that? This is why I focus a lot and I'll get into that at the city of Zion as a collective in line and in conjunction in partnership with some of the great minds and great hearts and pastors and leaders that God has blessed us with. We focus a lot on your identity. He says that you, um, you and I are meant to have the knowledge that Jesus himself has, that which Jesus knows of himself, that which Jesus knows of God, that that which Jesus knows that you and I are supposed to have the same knowledge. He says, and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure, and the perfect again is mature, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, meaning that all that Christ is, we will become. I remember one of my pastors asking me quite a few years ago, saying, what is my favorite portion of scripture? And I took him to Colossians 2 verse 9 and 10 in the King James. It says that in him, in Christ dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Verse 10 says, and we are complete in him. Uh, to put in a proper, uh, a better understood paraphrase, it says we by our union with Christ, we too are filled with the same fullness. Meaning we are supposed to come to that place where everything we see in Jesus, we begin to see in ourselves. If Jesus is our righteousness. We are now righteous. If Jesus is holy, we are holy. If Jesus is, is powerful and is able to turn the tides, irrespective of the situation, we're able to do the same. Jesus is able to calm a storm, we're able to do the same. The Bible makes it clear that as he is, 1 John 4, 17, so are we in this world. And so we are a teaching ministry and that's number one, uh, because it is God's desire that superstars are not raised and isolated to an individual. We are all superstars in Christ because Christ is in all of us. The only way we can come to the place where we are able to manifest as Christ the fullness of Christ. Do you know what it will be like if you are operating as Christ in every area of your life? The only way that that is even remotely possible is if you are being taught. You have to be taught. The second reason, apart from the fact that teaching is what brings this outcome, is also the fact um, that when 
the, the concept of teaching brings you to a place where you are able to do it yourself. In, in, in other words, we are what you will call a do-it-yourself ministry. Uh, so many people are challenged with it. So many people will want to go to a place where uh, somebody just lays hands on them and, and, and releases their own faith on their behalf because they don't want to put in the work. Uh, so many people will rather just go to a place where somebody just pours water on them or, or gives them oil to, uh, to drink or whatever else is going on out there because they don't want to put in the work. But not at the city of Zion. You see, at the city of Zion, there are times that, yes, we will stand on your behalf and we will release our faith on your behalf and we do that regularly. But our core assignment is to teach you so that you are able to do it for yourself. Not so that you can disregard your teachers. You will always need your teachers. But so that because you have learned it for yourself, you can also teach others and and so that's why we say that we are a do-it-yourself ministry a few other things that i want i want to share with you as we continue on this journey and 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 and, and remember the our our historicity i will never forget when i when i look back of how far we have come i must say that we have faced some challenges one of the greatest ones that i remember facing you see and i i want to share some of the difficulties um, that we have faced so that you understand that in as much as you have been called to perform a divine task you have been called to fulfill a divine mandate it does not mean that you will not face difficult times it does not mean you will not face challenges some people think that if you are going through a tough time that means you don't have faith that's not true some people think that if you're going through a tough time that means God has forsaken you that's also not true that is so far from the truth Jesus said that in this world we will have tribulation whether you are a lover of Jesus or you are a hater of God you will face opposition why there is a devil out there that wants that hates your guts we make wrong decisions we have to deal with people and their wrong decisions and we also have a devil out there um, 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 that, that is after us but we are also dealing with a broken world the world and its system itself is compromised so as a result of that inevitably we will face challenges i remember one of those challenges we we had moved again and and and, and from the hilton hotel we had moved to somewhere in randberg it's called the mintech um, um it's an engineering company but it had this phenomenal auditorium there I, we have no pictures of it because at that point in time we were just too busy trying to push push the ministry and trying to get the word that god had laid on our heart out out there that we didn't think to catalog our our journeys you know for a time such as this so I remember we we're there at the Mintech and while we were there because they gave us such an awesome discount I remember us praying that God will bless that organization God did I was watching the news one day and that engineering company had gotten a contract um, from the government an extended contract from the government and and while we were rejoicing we didn't know it was going to be a challenge for us I remember them calling us and saying to us that because of the contract they couldn't guarantee that we were remain in that order term so we started like nomads again moving again and I remember we ended up at River Song wonderful piece of property out there on Malibongwe Drive here um, um, in Randburg and I remember what one of those one of those Wednesdays I think it was it was a Wednesday at the end of the service if you google this it's actually you will actually find a news report I remember we had just finished service and one of my friends was was just blessing the people and armed men broke into the facility this was on a Wednesday night we just finished praying Can you imagine we just had a hot time in the word and in prayer and armed men broke in with guns and 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 they they robbed the uh, the the parishioners and some of us that were there they took some of the microphones here and there and i will never forget i felt so broken i remember one of the security um plainclothes police officers that came after we had called the cops came and said to us that we need to close the church down I, I don't know what his rationale was but he felt that way at that point it made sense to me I just felt what on earth is going on I remember sitting in my living room the very next day two of my friends were flanking me in my in uh, actually in my bedroom one on my left and one on my right and one of them said to me that hope you understand irrespective of how you are feeling that you will not be tempted above what you can handle and I just retorted tears streaming down my eyes oh I forgot to tell you our security guard 
God was shot and killed in the process. So this was not a small incident. This was the kind that could shake you to your bones, you know. And, and he said, you will not be tempted above what you can bear, quoting uh, from Corinthians. And I said to him, God has misplaced my brief. He has confused me with somebody else that has a greater faith. He has confused me with somebody else that can handle this because I cannot, you know. And, and that's how I felt there. But it's been many years later. It's probably been 12 years later. And we are still here. It just goes to show you that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him from them all. It goes to show you uh, that irrespective of how many times you are knocked down, if you will keep your head in the game and keep your heart in line with God, you will rise again. I don't know what you are facing right now. I don't know what you've been through. But if you are plugged to the city of Zion, this is, this is a ministry that has been through quite a lot and is still standing and is standing strong. So there is a grace to help carry you through. There is a grace to ensure that you keep bouncing back. Uh, but I digress. Let me try and push uh, the thought. So um, um, what are the scriptures that we, that, that encapsulate who we are? One of them will be Hebrews 11 verse 3. This is one of the reasons why we talk a lot about faith. In Hebrews 11 verse 3 it says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen are not made from things which do appear. You will note, if, 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 if you are trying to reason it through, that this, is, this particular scripture is where our logo, yes, this logo you can see right here, this is where this logo came from. This logo is a graphic representation of this particular verse. I'm sure some of you that have been in Zion will go, oh yeah, we didn't just put some things together. You see the shield that is in, in, in this logo, you can see that shield it represents faith. The Bible calls faith, the shield um, calls referred to faith, it refers to it as a shield of faith. And we see that in this verse, it says through faith, so that's the shield. It now says the whole worlds were framed by the word of God. The Bible speaking about the word of God refers to the double-edged sword. And that's the sword that cuts across. And then when he speaks about God, the word of God, God, that is the lion on rampart that you see on the shield. And, and this is one of the reasons why we, we address the concept of faith quite a bit, to help us appreciate the fact that everything that God has ever done and will ever do in our lives, he will do it against the backdrop of faith. And we understand that we have been given the faith of Jesus. This is why we talk a lot about faith, but we emphasize that our faith is the faith of Jesus and so it it cannot be denied. The second scripture, I'm sure you can guess that already from the name, the city of Zion, is Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. It says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill um, cannot be hid. I remember we were word integrity ministers for a number of years, maybe about three to four years. And then the Lord said, I have called you to be a city set upon a hill. That was when I received the name. That was when it occurred to me, the Lord wanted us to build him a community of people people that had a specific understanding and so I remember reaching out to Bishop Freddie Edwards he has been so wonderful um, um, if you if you're able to reach him just love up on on the bishop for us and he was one of the first people to embrace us you know at his um, level of exposure and he embraced us and we said the Lord will have us change our name to the city of Zion and he came he blessed us and he released grace concerning the city of Zion so that scripture Matthew 5 verse 14 Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Right. And, 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 and so we, we continued on our surgeons and, and it was from there we moved to Clearwater Mall. I want to, I, I, I'm hoping to show you a collage of pictures. Some of the pictures you're going to see about, uh, you know, of us at Clearwater Mall, they look so grainy. And, and, and it was a very interesting story. You see, in Clearwater Mall, when we left um, um, River Song in Randburg, when we moved over there, uh, it's a cinema hall. And so cinemas were made to keep light out, not bring light in. So we couldn't have a Lot of light in it and so every time you walked in there it felt like you were going to watch a movie because it would be dark so we had to put two two screens um, um projectors throwing um light onto the screens and and we try to make things as as interactive as we could from a technological perspective uh, so that the whole darkness in the arena um, was not such a distraction uh, and so these are some of the pictures we had some wonderful times there as the city of zion began to grow we hosted the likes of your 
Judas, Sapuma, and, and quite a few others. And God was doing awesome work. It was from there uh, that the Lord um, eventually moved us back into the Santa Metroplex. And that's where we ended up at Cedarwoods, where we had been for a number, a number of years. But now let me quickly go into why we are. Why are we? I mean, there's so many churches. Why did God need to establish another church? When I came through, um, um, I went to the Rema Bible Training College and, and I could just have planted my family there and joined uh, that particular thriving, blessed church there um, after I was done with the Bible school. But the Lord said no, that he had given us a unique mandate to, to bring a certain unique knowledge of him to the body of Christ. Our motto, our motto, catch this, is to establish a Christ consciousness in all individuals and in all institutions in all the nations of the earth. It sounds very big, it sounds very grand, but the message is very simple that everywhere we go, we are supposed to establish a Christ consciousness. A Christ consciousness means the knowledge that the Christ has, we are supposed to have and we are supposed to help other people have it. Because the truth is, if you know what he knows, then you will do what he does. If you do what he does you will have the results that he has and who amongst us doesn't want to have his own results and so it's to establish a Christ consciousness this is the reason why we focus a lot on teaching but not just teaching you could teach on anything and everything but a lot of our messages focus on our identity and, and this is why we have a number of series that deals with our identity I think there is one that we are actually advertising right now you need to get that identity series and the reason is this when you you if you get your identity wrong everything else will be compromised let me show you something in Genesis chapter 3 in Genesis chapter 3 so God had made Adam and Eve and everything was hunky-dory everything was great then the devil shows up in chapter 3 and the Bible starts by saying now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made and he said unto the woman um, yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. This is where the problem began. When God spoke to Eve, he said to Eve, to Adam and Eve, that you should not eat of the tree. But what Eve had interpreted and she had added for people blame Adam maybe Adam didn't explain it to her properly, um, pr um, properly but she said that God said that we should not eat of it we should not even touch it saints please understand and this is why we teach a lot when you don't when you believe wrong you will do wrong when you do wrong consistently it's not a spirit it's a wrong belief and so we teach so that we can intercept the wrong understanding and the wrong belief systems God said in the day you eat of it you will surely die she said God said we should not eat of it we should not even touch it that little deviation from what God had said began to create a problem this is why we've also started the Bible school a few years ago Ooh, and the Bible school is such a trip um, 2018 I believe we started the Bible school um, now in 2021 uh, class one is in their final year they're about to graduate these are some of the graduation pictures that you can see scrolling they're about to graduate now and they will graduate with an, um, an international and bachelor's degree and and we have new sets coming in if you have not joined in you can still uh, join us in the Bible school and we do that because if Eve understood clearly what God had said she might not have ended up where she ended up but that's that's not even the the crux of the matter now the the devil now said and the serpent said unto the woman let, let me let me read this properly he said the serpent said unto the woman ye shall not surely die for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods knowing good from evil knowing good and evil and that's where 
the problem was. Adam and Eve were already made in the image and in the likeness of God. But the devil said to her that if you eat of this, you will be like God. She began to think, maybe I'm not like God. Maybe God is holding something back from me. There is something um, that I'm supposed to have that God didn't give me. God doesn't, I, I, God didn't really make me like him. The minute she stopped seeing herself the way God saw her, the minute the devil was able to cause her to doubt who she was, cause her identity to come into question, she acted less than who she, she was. And that's the problem here. And this is why we focus a lot on transformation. We focus a lot on who you are in Christ. We focus a lot on your, your, your content and your container. We focus a lot on not just the content of your mind, but also how you think. We focus a lot on how to use the word of God to renew the mind. The Bible says that do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. We focus a lot on that because we have seen, and, and it is a true saying, that if we can change your mind by the word of God, if we can upgrade your thinking to be at the consciousness of Christ, and that's our focus at the city of Zion, everything will change with it. We see how Eve was compromised. You see, I, I, I believe that when we get to, to, to the sweet by and by, they will have to put security guards at the house of Adam and Eve, you know, because, because I don't want to, I don't want to cause, you know, throw shade. I don't want to cause a fight or a ruckus in, in paradise, but I will probably go knock on their door and I will have to have a conversation with Adam and, and Eve and say, was it that juicy? Was it that nice? Um, did you really, I mean, it, it better have changed your world uh, because I, look at what we, we have become. You know, look at what we went through uh, because of you. Uh, maybe I'm joking, maybe I'm serious, I don't know. I suspect I'm serious actually. But, but the issue here was because she doubted who she was, everything else in her life matched her compromised identity. You will also recall that was the exact same thing the devil tried to do in Matthew chapter 3 to Jesus. The Bible talks about Jesus being baptized and the devil comes and the devil asks him this question. If you are the son of God, do X, Y, and Z. He was trying to cause Jesus to also doubt his identity. Many of us are in that ballpark where you hear statements like, as it is, so are we in this world. And you were saying, but, but the way I behave and, and my powerlessness and, and my bad habits and, and my sinful nature and, and blah, 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 blah. And, and you don't know what I've been through. I, I am not as he is. I, I, I'm not even as he was, talk less as, of as he is. Saints, this is why the city of Zion exists. It is to teach you, to equip you, so that you, when you look at yourself in the mirror, you see Christ. Saints, I have said this once, I will say it a hundred times. When we are, the believer is the only anomaly that exists on the face of the earth. When, when a lion looks at its reflection, it sees a lion. When a giraffe looks at its reflection, it sees a giraffe. But when the believer looks at his reflection or her reflection, he or she is supposed to see Christ. You are a reflection of Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18, the passion, no, the message translation says that we are indistinguishable from Christ. I know this is about our vision, uh, but I can't help but teach. I want you to repeat after me. I am indistinguishable from Christ. Come on, go there. Let's do it again. I am indistinguishable uh, from Christ. Meaning whatever we see in him is available to me. Whoever he is, that is who I am. Whatever he can do, that is what I can do. That's a statement that we must begin to echo over and over again. Whatever Jesus can do, that is what I can do. Whatever he can handle, I can handle. His faith is my faith. His knowledge is my knowledge. His wisdom is my wisdom. I see as he sees and I speak even as he speaks because when God looks at you and I, he sees Christ. The question really is when you look at yourself, what do you see? What do you see? And so we focus a lot on our identity. And number two, because our, our focal point at the city of Zion, because we need a birth of Christ consciousness, is founded, really, it's really founded on this Genesis 3. So Eve doubted her identity and she was compromised. But number two, Eve also questioned the goodness of God. Because the devil said that God is withholding something from you. God is not giving you everything that he wants you, that you could possibly have. God is withholding his goodness from you. And for as long 
as, um, as Eve believed something wrong about God, she was no longer able to experience the full goodness of God. And that's the same thing here. One of our emphasis and one of the things that we are really trying to get out there, really trying to impress upon your hearts for those of you that are really part of this family and take out there into our streets, into our malls, into our offices and everywhere we can is the fact that God is good and only does good. There's a lot of teaching out there about how God will take you through chaos so that he can teach you. God will let you, we don't say God will bring chaos to you. We say things like God allows chaos so that he can teach you something. God allows chaos so that when you survive it, you can help others. But no, that is not the God that we serve. You will say, but what about this verse? What about that verse? I want to advocate something. I can't explain that now, but let me advocate something. On my YouTube channel, there is a five-part series called Who is God? Go there and watch. Take the series one at a time. You know, we binge on, on programs on Netflix. We binge on programs on DSTV or whatever stations uh, that you are fond of. I want you to binge on the Word of God. Take a cup of coffee and, and, the next, and, and, and clear your itinerary for the next 24 hours and go to the Who is God series and listen. Where we try to explain, there is also another one there on the sovereignty of God. It will bless you. It will strengthen you. It will help you begin to see God for who he really is. How do you believe in a God um, that is able to save you if you also believe that he might be part of your problem? And so many people out there actually believe that, that God is all powerful. And because he's all powerful, if something happens, it's because, it's because God could have stopped it, but he did not stop it because he wanted it to happen. And because he has a bigger purpose. Saints of God, I won't dwell, but I still need to say this. A father who can stop chaos from happening to his child and does nothing about it should be arrested. In this natural realm, he will be arrested. He will be arrested for negligence. He will be, he will be castigated in, 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 in the, the, the public uh, domain as well. Why? Because that is an irresponsible parent. And to think that God is like that, saints something is wrong and when we believe wrong about God like Eve did we we open the door for the devil to be able to release attacks and sustain those attacks against us and so we have a mandate why are we we are established as a teaching do-it-yourself ministry to equip everyone who partners everyone who comes into um, through our doors and partners with this family with the knowledge of the identity in Christ and a better view of who who God really is the one who says he does not do evil neither does he tempt anyone with evil when your identity is right and your perspective about God is right you will enter into the perfecting of the saints which I just showed in Ephesians 4 the maturing of the saints and 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 you will come into the fullness of the stature of Christ that that, that, that is the game plan. That is what fuels us. That is what causes us to do what we do. We, we are also um, um, laced with a variety of ministries because we are trying to see what is possible to be able to bring your life to a place where you have, uh, uh, there is a mantra that I have. <laughs> uh, as I started, some of you that have been with me will know where I'm going with it. I believe that your life is supposed to be a total success. I believe that when you cross the finish line of your life and I don't know what your finish line is but when you cross the finish line of your life it is God's desire that your health will cross with you it is God's desire that your wealth will cross with you it is God's desire that your children will cross with you that your your relationships your godly relationships will cross the finish line with you that your your physical um, sanity sanity will cross the finish line also that your walk with God will be on fire it will cross the finish line that every there will be no loss every aspect of your life will experience victory every aspect of your life will cross that finish line and that is what we believe and the only way that can be accomplished right is through the word of God and the establishment of a variety of ministries so we have a variety of ministries at the end of March 
likely March, if the, if the dates change, we will send a message out. Um, but likely at the end of March, we are going to be having a new members welcome um, session. And the purpose of that is so that those of you that have come in, we can introduce you to some of the ministries that we have. The ministry uh, for the married, uh, the ministry that we have for the teens, uh, the ministry we have for the women, uh, the one that we're trying to establish now for the men. A variety of things that we are trying to put in place to just minister uh, to your entire life to bring your entire life to a place of comfort to a place where it encounters a god and, and that's why we are there's so much more that i can say if you are listening and you want to get a bit more information about why we are you have a few questions you would love to ask us that is awesome because at the new members welcome session all our pastors will be there we will introduce the pastors to you maybe a few leaders will also jump in on that zoom call so that you can meet the family all right you can meet the family, get to know the family, ask a few questions, and we can ensure that you understand um, 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 the chariot that you have chosen to hitch your wagon to. Now, my final thought is how are we going to get there? That's a big one. The truth is, let's accept the fact that if, if, if God's assignment to us is to establish a Christ consciousness in all individuals, that's a big one in all institutions that's a big one in all the nations of the earth it doesn't get bigger than that unless of course uh, god says that we need to go to mars or wherever else as well but the idea is this to do that we need to be willing to all come together it will take you and i and everyone that god has called and given this mandate and assigned to be part of the city of zion it will take us partnering together to actually get to that destination i will need you as much as you will need me so that we can bring this together um, um we will need to be able to put um, that which we teach on every platform, online, um, terrestrial, television, we will need to do that. We will need to establish outposts in, in as many provinces as we can and even go continentally and globally. We will need to ensure uh, that we have the right tools and technology. When we say tools, that is the, the, the you and I are well equipped understanding this responsibility well equipped both with the knowledge of the son of god and the power thereof and a passion to actually fulfill this mandate we will need the right tools and then we need the right technology so that as the world has become global you know it's a globalization and it's also localization so there is still the local church but the local church has become as has been forced into a global arena so as we go global we will need your talents we will need your your intelligence we will need your time we will need your resources financial and otherwise to ensure that we are able to bring people to a place where they see God for who he really is every time we have a wrong understanding every time we believe that God made this person sick uh, so that this person could slow down and learn to pray the fact that the person learned to pray which is good does not mean it was God's desire that that person would go through that hardship it is not God's desire that we go through that kind of crisis and the, the better we understand this God the better we are able to display him to others and the better we are able to cause the world to experience the manifestation of the sons of God 2021 the Lord says that it is the rising of the sons of God the whole world the this is in Romans 8 the whole world awaits for the manifestation it says the whole world is in jeopardy it's in turmoil and, and, and God's answer to that is you and I I've said so much we have tried to put some pictures I want to say to you if you are part of the city of Zion you have come to God's kingdom. You have come to where you will be taught, equipped, empowered. If you will pay attention, you have come to a place where you will hear the voice of God, you will see the grace of God, and you will also be equipped to manifest it. If you are on the fence and you are saying, I'm not sure, I wanna say, this is a place to be. We are a happy bunch. We are a committed bunch. We are a people who we are convinced that if you're part of our family and you are going through a tough time, we need to band together and see what can be done to carry you through the whole concept though is are you going to come on board we need you to to come on board fully to ensure that we accomplish this mandate it is my heart's desire 
my heart's desire. And I, I sense that it is God's desire too, that you come to the place where you have received the knowledge of the Son of God and you manifest Him like no one ever thought possible. If you will stay with us, and the host of pastors and leaders and workers and, and people available to serve you. If you will join forces with us, you will look back and say, I can't believe how far I have come. The city of Zion, a city set upon a hill, has a mandate, has a calling from the divine, a calling that by the mercies of God, in this year and in the years to come, we will see manifest. There's so much more that I can say, but I'm going to stop for now so that I don't overwhelm um, um, your senses. But if nothing at all, if you've forgotten everything else I've said, remember this, your identity in Christ is everything. If you see yourself as God sees you, as Christ sees you, which is as a reflection of himself, everything will come together. Everything will fall into place. I want to say welcome, even to those of you that have been part of this family. Uh, maybe I should first say thank you. I want to say thank you to all the pastors, to all the heads of departments. In the last one year going into this year, it's been tough, it's been rough. I want to say thank you to all the workers who right now we've not even been sure how we're going to keep you engaged, but you have remained part of the family. I want to say thank you to every current citizen of Zion. Yes, in Zion, we don't just call you members, we call you citizen because we're raising a community, we're raising a city. I want to say thank you to every citizen of Zion, every citizen of Zion that gives in their time, that gives in their money to ensure that we are able to carry this vision forward. And I want to say welcome to every new person that has chosen to make this house their home. It is a joy to have you. If you are watching and you are saying, I want to be part of this family, and, and you're on the live chat, there's a link, click the link, fill in your details. If not, there's an email address, fill in your details there. Somebody will reach out to you. We will be so overjoyed to welcome you into our family. But I cannot leave until I reach out to anyone who is watching now or even later. If you are watching and you are not born again, if you are watching and you have not accepted Jesus, this is your moment. And it's so easy, it is so unbelievably easy Please say this prayer after me. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. Therefore, from this moment, I am born again. Thank you, Father, for accepting me into your family. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, there is a link on the live chat. There is also, again, that same email address. Send us a message saying, I just prayed that prayer. Um, I'm with Pastor Tim and we will send you a welcome to the family gift so that you know the next steps. But also I want to encourage you, find a Bible believing church. If it's going to be the city of Zion, we will be honored. Not just, not just glad or elated, we will be honored to have you. If not, find a Bible believing church, partner with them so that you can grow. It has been my joy to take you on a brief memory lane and to reintroduce the city of Zion. My heart is, is, is eager, is eager to do life, to do ministry with you. I hope you will follow us and this team on that journey because we know that the outcome has already been predetermined by the finished work of, of, of Christ, by his shed blood on that cross. God bless you. Please stay behind. We're, I'm going to come back and give you the benediction. All right. Oh, by the way, you should have had your development classes, um, your first development class uh, today. How did it go? If you are there, you're saying, what's that development class? Reach out to us so that we can give you the right information and engage you. I'll catch you at the benediction. See you shortly. Hi, Tim Gray here, Senior Pastor of the City of Zion. Just before Jesus Christ ascended, after his resurrection, he gave us a charge. The charge is found in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, which says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Ghost. If these were the final words of the master just before he left the earth physically, it is of great import that we understand what he said and what he meant. I want you to join me for a five part series starting from Sunday the 14th of February. This five part series is going to expand on the concept of go ye. When the master returns, he's not gonna ask us how many cars we bought. He's not gonna ask us how many houses we built or even how many children we sired. He's going to ask us, did we, did we fulfill the mandate, go ye. In this five part series, we will understand what it means to go, how we expect it to go, what are the master's expectations and what are the expectations that we also can have of the one who has sent us. It is a family message. I will ask that you will get the family together. It's gonna to be on my YouTube channel. It's 10 a.m. starting from February the 14th Sunday. You don't want to miss it. As I always say, don't meet me there beat me there. We thank you for joining us for today's online service. Now here's two important questions you must ask yourself. What did the message say to me? And what, if any, is my response? Join us again for our Sunday morning online service with Pastor Tim Grage on YouTube next week Sunday at 10 a.m. For your tithes and offering, here are our banking details. Please note that your heartfelt giving to the Kingdom in this season will aid the many struggling financially in this time and we thank you for your generosity. Thank you for joining us for our 10 a.m. Sunday online service. The City of Zion looks forward to hosting you at 93 Grayson Drive very, very soon. Welcome back. I hope you got all the announcements. Again, I want to say a big thank you to all of you who support the City of Zion financially. The fact that we are not meeting live does not mean that we still don't have expenses. And some of you understand that and you have not been emotional. You have ensured that you have given, you have ensured that you have tithed, you have supported. For those of you that don't do that, come on board. All right, because we're using your money to further and extend the kingdom of God. Very important announcement on the 25th, Thursday, the 25th of February. That's this month. Um, that's about what, two weeks from now, Thursday, the 25th of this month at 6.30 p.m. If the city of Zion is, is your home, you are part of the family, we want to have a family meeting on Zoom. So it's not going to be broadcast to the general public. We want to bring you into the Zoom environment, the Zoom room, and let's discuss uh, the fact that church is supposed to be reopening. What, what is our take? What are the plans? Are we reopening or not? We don't want to just throw the information at you, but we love you to come in so that we can interact for about an hour, field a few questions, a few concerns. Um, we have no intention as of now of reopening in February, uh, but we need to examine if there's a possibility of reopening in the months to come. So please dial rise the date is the 25th of February. It's 6.30 p.m. The link, um, the Zoom link will be sent to every citizen of Zion. Today again, you must have had your Zion development classes. If you missed it, you can still come on board. It's, it's every Sunday, 9 a.m. just before service. You need to get on that boat. It will, it will take you to somewhere glorious, okay? Um, what else? I think that's about it. Oh, Sunday school, Sunday school, kids. 10.30, your class is already um, up and running. Please go and engage your teachers. They're excited to be with you. Please go watch your class. I keep saying to parents, if you will get the word into your kids today, they will give you less chaos in years to come. All right? All right, let's share the benediction. I hope you remember you were blessed. I hope you understood. Now you, you have a clear indication as to who we are, why we are, where we are going. Um, remember, end of March, I believe, we're going to be having um, a, a new member welcome session. Uh, so if, if that's you, please send us an email. We will include you on the list. We already have a fledgling and growing list. We'll include you on the list so that we can field all your questions and welcome you officially to the family this particular particular family. Are you ready? Let's share the benediction together. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. And surely God's goodness and mercies are following us all the days of our lives. And we are the dwelling house of the Lord forever and ever. 
Amen. I'll catch you tomorrow, 5 a.m. at Devotions. Bye for now. Welcome to the City of Zion. Welcome to the City on a Hill. This is home. This is our family. This is where we connect. This is where we come alive. It's where we worship. It's where we grow. This is where we encounter God. Where no one is a stranger. And where no one is alone. This is where we find purpose. Where you are loved. And it's where we serve. This is where we learn. And it's where change begins. This is where people matter and hope is real. This is where God is glorified. Where God transforms. We are God's people. We are the city of Zion.